Welcome to our latest episode. Just because you don't have a passport doesn't mean you aren't a U.S. citizen. I'm your host, Jimmy Sexton. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about what makes someone a U.S. citizen. Spoiler alert, it isn't a U.S. passport. Just because you don't have a U.S. passport doesn't mean you aren't a U.S. citizen. This is a common misconception that many people have. I was recently... Welcome to the Wealth Uncensored Podcast. Straight talk about everything that impacts your wealth. In each episode, I share what I've learned through my own experience and two decades of helping high net worth clients structure their affairs to minimize taxes and protect their assets for the next generation. I'll also feature special guests who are experts in their own field, sharing their knowledge and experience to help you protect what's yours. I'm your host, Jimmy Sexton. Let's dive into today's show. I was recently reminded of this when I met with a wealthy family. The kids were born in the U.S., so they were obviously U.S. citizens at birth. But they were also citizens of another country at birth. They were dual citizens at birth. At some point in the future, they traded their other citizenship, not their U.S. citizenship, but the second citizenship they had at birth. They traded that for another citizenship. The same time they stopped using their US citizenship or or US passports and never renewed the US passports. They mistakenly believed they weren't US citizens because they didn't have valid US passports. Wrong. Your US passport and US citizenship are completely separate. You don't need to have a US passport to be a US citizen. In fact, more US citizens don't have passports than do. There are many U.S. citizens that go their entire lives without having a U.S. passport. The only way to rid yourself of U.S. citizenship is to expatriate. That is to formally renounce your U.S. citizenship at a U.S. embassy or consulate. Also, even if you weren't born in the U.S. and even if you never had a U.S. passport, you could still be a U.S. citizen. U.S. citizenship is generally conferred as a matter of law. So. Children born in the U.S. are obviously U.S. citizens, regardless of the citizenship of their parents. So you could have two non-U.S. citizens that have never been citizens, don't have green cards, don't live in the U.S., nothing, and they have a kid in the U.S., that kid's a U.S. citizen because they were born in the U.S. But let's take a look at who is considered a U.S. citizen at birth when born outside of the U.S., because this is where complications often arise and confusion about who is and who is not a U.S. citizen. So, a child born outside of the U.S. to married parents will be U.S. citizens if at least one of the parents is a U.S. citizen, the child's parents are legally married, and at least one parent has a genetic or gestational relationship to the child, and the U.S. citizenship parent or the U.S. citizen parent was physically present in the U.S. or one of its outlying possessions for at least one continuous year at some point before the child's birth. That is, if the child was born before June 12, 2017. So if the child was born before June 12, 2017, the U.S. citizen parent will have had to have had continuous physical presence in the U.S., for at least one year sometime before the child was born. And if they did, that child is automatically a U.S. citizen. Now, if the child was born after June 12, 2017, the U.S. citizen parent must have had at least five years of physical presence in the United States, two of which must have been after that parent attained the age of 14. If so, then your child is a U.S. citizen as a matter of law. Now, let's look at what happens for children born out of wedlock. A child born to a U.S. citizen mother is a U.S. citizen if, and again, we're going to split this up into if they were born before June 12, 2017 or after June 12, 2017. So if the child is born to a U.S. citizen mother before June 12, 2017, the child will automatically be a U.S. citizen if the child's mother was a U.S. citizen at the time of the child's birth and the child's U.S. citizen mother was physically present in the United States or one of its outlying possessions for one continuous year at some point prior to the child's birth. 
Now, for children born after June 12, 2017, they will automatically be a U.S. citizen if the child's mother was a U.S. citizen at the time of the child's birth and the child's U.S. citizen mother was physically present in the United States or one of its outlying possessions for at least five years at some point before the child's birth. And two of those years need to be after the mother attained the age of 14. Now, children born out of wedlock to U.S. citizen fathers are not automatically U.S. citizens, right? So they don't automatically acquire U.S. citizenship at birth. But they may qualify for U.S. citizenship if the father takes some affirmative steps. But that's beyond the scope of, of this podcast. Now, just keep in mind that this foregoing discussion has been a general overview of how children become U.S. citizens. It's not an in-depth treatise on the topic. There are some nuanced rules, especially revolving around U.S. possessions and U.S. nationals versus citizens, that are not discussed in this podcast. Always best to consult with a professional if you are a U.S. citizen or national having a child and want to know if that child's going to be a U.S. citizen or not at birth, or if they qualify for U.S. citizenship, or if you're the child of a U.S. citizen or a U.S. national and want to know your U.S. citizenship status, it's also best to consult with a professional that's going to be able to give you that information. So just to recap, we've discussed that being a U.S. citizen and having a U.S. passport are two completely separate things. You can be a U.S. citizen without ever having had or having a U.S. passport. Additionally, becoming a U.S. citizen is a function of law. You may be a U.S. citizen even if you don't want to be and even if you don't have a passport. As you probably know, being a U.S. citizen comes with significant tax drawbacks. Most notably, U.S. citizens are taxed based on their citizenship, meaning you pay U.S. taxes on your worldwide income regardless of where you live and regardless of whether you've ever lived in the U.S. or regardless of whether you have a passport. But it also comes with worldwide estate and gift taxes, which can also be quite expensive if you're a U.S. citizen and you give gifts to people or if you die being a U.S. citizen, your estate's going to be subject to U.S. estate tax. So knowing a U.S. citizenship status is very important so you know what your U.S. tax obligations are. It is also important to know so you know if your U.S. citizenship will be passed down to your kids. If you are a U.S. citizen and you're interested in expatriating, I created a useful expatriation exit tax calculator to help you determine if you're a non-covered expatriate or a covered expatriate and therefore subject to an exit tax. It will also help you estimate your exit tax in the event you are a covered expatriate. I'll put a download link to the exit tax calculator in the description. I hope you found this episode useful. Thank you for joining me on Wealth Uncensored, where we help you minimize taxes and protect your wealth for the next generation. If you like our show, be sure to subscribe and leave a review. And if you have any questions or suggestions for future episodes, we'd love to hear from you. You can email us at info at esquiregroup.com. And don't forget to visit Esquire Group's website for more information on how we can help you secure your wealth. I'll be dropping knowledge again next week. Don't forget to join us.